Floods in Orsk leave thousands homeless and ADRA mobilizes efforts to face emergency crisis in Russia. Inter-American Adventist leaders receive training for Alive in Jesus curriculum launch in 2025. Advent Health volunteers and Adventist Hospital impact thousands in health mission in Kenya. The Helping Hand Center in Croatia reflects Christ's mission through free medical assistance. These and other impactful news await you now here at ANN. Thousands of people were evacuated from their homes in the Russian city of Orsk after rising waters from the Ural River flooded villages and caused the dam to collapse. In response to the crisis, the Advanced Development and Relief Agency, ADRA, established a center aid program that provides essential items such as water, food, clothing, and hygiene items to the victims. Additionally, the Adventist Humanitarian Agency plans to assist in the reconstruction of damaged homes and infrastructure in the region. In the city of Orsk, in the south of the Urals, on the evening of April 5th, the Ural River broke through the dam, and masses of water flooded residential neighborhoods. More than 10,000 houses were flooded, 1,000 people were evacuated and lost their property. We have a garden in the lowlands a little bit, and there are so many meters. Ural can, 500 meters. I look, there is already the sea. And gradually, gradually, they move this stick. They are moving. It arrives, arrives, arrives. But we are believers, we prayed. <laughs> On the night from Friday to Saturday, the dam broke, and water began to flood the old part of the city. At that time, we could not yet imagine the scale of this disaster. But by the end of Saturday, we already understood that the problems were truly catastrophic. And we immediately started thinking about what to do, how to help, contacting the pastor of the Orsk community and representatives of Adra. In the end, the decision was made that the first thing needed was to purchase drinking water, because the water in the city's water supply system became unfit for consumption. There were reports of people getting poisoned and ending up in hospitals. We purchased 10.5 tons of water, and the prayer house of the second community will become a center of assistance for the affected. Here, we will distribute drinking water. That is, to show people not just the gospel, but also by deeds. I like helping people because they need it. Several of our brothers and sisters, members of the church, found themselves in the flood zone. Their homes are completely underwater. Consequently, all their property, everything they had accumulated, has been ruined, and they will need to rebuild everything. We didn't even have time to blink, and the water started flooding us quickly. So, well, in general, about four hours later, they evacuated us. You know, just like that. Of course, there is a residue because the strength is not the same anymore. Rebuilding all of this is not financially possible now. Well, practically, we can't do anything now. My pension is 15000 and my spouse also has a pension. I am the mother of a daughter who ended up underwater. We built a very nice house, bought it completely on a mortgage from scratch. The water was up to the roof. So nothing at all, absolutely nothing, was saved. They managed to take a couple of underwear, t-shirts, pants, and they came with that. We are all united, we are united, and the church always helps, so we hoped for that. But we got used to this thought, hoping in God. And yesterday, the houses started floating. Most likely, they were either not connected to the foundation of the house well, like made of wooden logs. Well, they are cheap. The prayer house of the first community also turned out to be flooded. And one of the communities, the first community of the city of Orsk, it was seriously affected. The house was flooded up to the middle, somewhere water stands up to the middle of the building. We are very worried because everything will need to be restored, everything repaired. And most importantly, of course, we are worried that there will be resources 
financial resources for the restoration of our prayer house. To provide assistance to those affected by flooding in the communities of the Euro-Asian division. Voluntary donations will be collected at the Saturday services on April 13th. Support those affected by floods by donating on the ADRA website, adra.org.ru. Sabbath school children and adolescent ministries and directors from across the Seventh-day Adventist Church in the Inter-American region gathered to review the new Alive in Jesus Sabbath School curriculum produced by the General Conference. The three-day event was held in Miami, Florida, United States. Pastor Samuel Telemache, Sabbath School Director of the Inter-American Territory, urged to train leaders and teachers on the new Alive in Jesus Sabbath School curriculum that will begin to be implemented in 2025. The new curriculum seeks to equip and empower parents, caregivers, Sabbath school teachers, Sabbath school leaders, and others to model and foster a thriving relationship with Jesus and the children in the spheres of influence. During the three-day training sessions, participants received advanced training in various aspects of religious education, character development, teaching methods for different age groups, and techniques for teaching children with special needs. The sessions also included demonstrations, group interactions, and moments of prayer. The president of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in the Inter-American region, Ely Henry, expressed gratitude to Sabbath school and children and adolescent ministries leaders for their dedication to strengthening the faith of children within the territory. Henry encouraged attendees to leave the training with a commitment to help children and people to feel Jesus' love and kindness. In the 16th medical mission of Advent Health, a partnership with Kendu Adventist Hospital in Kenya brought hope and healing. Founded in 1925, the hospital stands as a beacon of health in a challenged region. Dedicated volunteers served thousands of people, donated glasses, and performed life-changing surgeries. Choose my battles Oh, you know that's who I am It's our first day in Kenya. We've had an amazing welcome from the local people here. And over the next week, success would be seeing a whole bunch of patients here and making sure that we work hand in hand with our partners here in Kenya and spend as much time educating the people so when we leave in a week, they can continue that same great care that we've been providing all week to the community. You know, many of these patients have chronic medical problems, but with a case like this where you're removing a large tumor, it's just extremely gratifying to be able to change them in one afternoon. But he'll be able to flex his neck back, he'll be able to lay his head down on a pillow, and he won't be known as the guy with the huge mass on the back of his head. Haribu. I didn't know what to expect. Being able to do this, and give to these people in ways that I am not able to give at home. I, could, I would do this every day of my life if I could. This is what I was meant to do, I think.
Join James Weingartner and Sam Neves in this episode of AN in Depth as they talk about Adventist risk management, stewarding assets, and protecting through insurance. What we are is our little catchphrase is our ministry is to protect your ministry. Mm. We don't typically do ministry. We don't hold evangelistic meetings. We don't own a church. We don't build anything. What we do is we make sure that when there is a loss, that you, the, the minister, the steward of this ministry, gets your assets back. I always say that everything we do is designed to either preserve, protect, or restore your ministry assets. So if a vandal came in here and hammered up your microphones, we would replace your microphones. That's restoring ministry assets. If you uh, can't afford health insurance, the church can't afford health insurance, we do the health self-insurance in order to preserve the assets. And then we train people to protect the assets, to do the right thing with regard to the assets, to not have the extension cords and 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 the that sort of thing. So that that's what we do. And it's extremely spiritual. In fact, we have a secret in Adventist risk management. Prayer. <laughs> that's not a secret. The uh -huh. secret that we have is that we have a, a kind of a secret goal. We want to be the most spiritual department of the general conference. Hmm. Because we know that what we do ministers specifically to you, the exposure creator, the person who's steward of these assets. And we always say there are three losses. Whenever there's a loss, there's three losses. There's the money loss. That's the obvious one. That's what everybody thinks we're here for. Time distraction loss. Mm. If somebody crushed your microphones... You'd be having to reshop for them. You'd have to be replacing them. You'd have to be plugging them in. You'd have to be wondering, why did this person come in here? That loss would in, in, engender all kinds of distraction for you from your ministry. And we don't need any of that. And then the last one is reputational loss. To watch this full episode and many more, visit our official YouTube channel. In Pula, Croatia, the Helping Hand Counseling Center offers free and integrated health services. The initiative of the Trans-European Adventist Church reflects Christ's mission to heal and serve. Welcome to Pula, Croatia. In the heart of this 3,000-year-old city, there is a very special counseling center. Let's go and see it. Well, this is make a big difference, I, I will say, because of our church, that we decided to go out from our building and to do something for the community. Most of the time, uh, most of the time, our approach of doing mission is, you know, to invite people to come to us, to our church. But uh, as I understand uh, Jesus' way of mission, it was different because Jesus all the time uh, was uh, willing to go where the people are and to communicate with them, them and ask about uh, the problems they they are having, you know, and start and always willing to help them where the people are. So we decided to do something to go outside from our building, and to do something for the community where the people actually lives and where they are in the city, you know. So we find this venue and started this center. COVID was actually a trigger point because we realized that everything was changing. People were um, very lonely. People were even angry. And so we really worried about what's happening. So we decided that we are going to help people with their health, physical health, uh, their mental health, with the social sort of issues and problems, as well as spirituality. In Croatian society, more and more, it's difficult to approach to people with just spiritual content because many of the young generations, they are on the first mention of something religious or spiritual, they are refusing any uh, further contact. Checking out. Yes, they are just <laughs> yeah. checking out from, from, from any other discussion. So you are combining mental health and spirituality from the beginning saying, hey, we are Christians and we're here to help you. And you have a group of professionals. What kind of professionals? Tell us what you do and the other professionals who are here. Okay. 
I, my background is social work and, and uh, uh, studies in psychology. I was working as a social worker and then as a lecturer for many years. Then we have a medical doctor who is also a psychiatrist and we have pastors. I had a few mothers coming here who had problems with their daughters who had mental health issues. So bipolar disorder, anxiety and, and depression. There was one woman who started to come here almost a year ago because she was developing after the uh, death of her father and some other issues in her relationship. She was developing anxiety which had really also bad physical symptoms. And um, we were helping her through trying to with her and her mom says she's a different person. And she keeps you know, thanking us, both of them, mom uh, and, and daughter for what we are doing. So I can only say thank God for actually giving us this opportunity. With the woman that we were talking about, they, they, were, they are Christians and they know that we are Protestants, but I didn't offer to pray with them. But the woman, the, 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 the lady actually asked, my husband was with me and asked who, what was he doing? And I said, well, he's a retired pastor. And then she asked him to pray. Right. And this was many months ago. We are still praying with her whenever visiting her. Remember in prayer, the work in Pula and Croatia. Because of your prayers, because of your encouragement, because of your support, the work in Pula and centers like this can go across the Trans-European division and the work of the gospel can go further than ever before. In the Dominican Republic, 800 people were baptized, deciding to actively join the Seventh-day Adventist Church, marking the end of intense evangelism campaigns. The mobilization united faith and hope, connecting pastors, lay people, theology students, and evangelists from the USA in activities that included Bible studies and community initiatives. The spiritual celebration took place at the Palmyra Davis Adventist Camp in Hato Mayor, where thousands witnessed hundreds of baptisms. The president of the Dominican Union, Pastor Teofilo Silvestre, emphasized the church's mission to transform communities with the gospel of Jesus. Among the significant moments, Rafael Reyes Castillos, the national director of the specialized police, SWAT, traveled for hours to join the celebration and be baptized. With nearly 15,000 visitors at church services in the evening, leaders are optimistic that the wave of evangelism will only grow in the Dominican Republic. In the face of adversity in Timor-Leste, Maria's story emerges. Adra brought hope by promoting ways for this family of eight children. They live in a locality with limited access to clean water and where the harvest wasn't even enough to provide for the family. I feel heavy-hearted because I have a disability. But if I don't work, how will I earn money? My name is Maria and I'm from Timor-Leste. I am married and I have eight children. In 1975, as I was fleeing my village because of the war, I got a wound on my leg that got infected. Years later, I was taken to Dili where they cut off my leg so I didn't die from the infection. It is difficult to earn money without my leg. When we planted crops before, the harvest wasn't enough and we didn't have enough food to feed all our children. I also wanted my children to continue their schooling, but it was difficult to earn money. Then, Edra came to work with our community. We received clean water, and training on how to best plant vegetables. This is good because before, when we got water from the river, we would often get sick. But now, our water is clean. This project trains family to grow their own kitchen garden. Kitchen gardens help families in so many ways. They provide nutritious food for the family and gives them an income through selling extra vegetables at the market. Things are good now. Now we plant vegetables and do the washing. And we don't need to go far for water. And now when we harvest the vegetables, we can sell the extra. 
Things are going well in the garden. When we get the money from selling the vegetables, I'm glad because we can save some money and we can also use some for the children's schooling. My garden is very good now. Edra brought good things for us. We want them to continue working with us. Do you know what happens with the 13th Sabbath offerings? Why is it so important and what is done with it? If you want to understand the impact, results, and significance of this special offering, this next video is for you. For more than 110 years, the 13th Sabbath offering has empowered the Seventh-day Adventist Church to launch mission boats, fly mission planes, heal the sick, educate young people, reach the unreached, and change lives. The sacrificial giving of faithful Adventists for more than a century has brought light and hope to every corner of the globe. Many of these offerings have gone toward children's projects. In 2011, a portion of the 13th Sabbath offering was used to translate children's materials like books into the local languages of Armenia, Azerbaijan, and Georgia. More than 10 years later, we can see the effects that these materials had on that generation of children. Garam is a video editor in the Adventist Church in the city of Tbilisi, Georgia. The translated materials from the 2011 13th Sabbath offering were instrumental in shaping his spiritual life. I was about eight years old when my parents brought me to church. At that time, there was already a group of children who would actively study the Bible. These lessons, which were conducted in my native language, significantly contributed to my getting to know God. Years passed, and today, I try to be actively involved in service. Currently, with the support of Adventist World Radio, I participate in the preparation of video materials. I hope God will help us do even more in our country. In another Georgian city, Layla remembers not being interested in church as a kid. It wasn't until there were materials designed for her that she started to enjoy going to church. Layla grew closer to God and began getting more involved in church. Today, she's the assistant Sabbath school teacher for the children. She loves passing on her passion for Jesus to this young generation. Children's classes are important because children need to grow in understanding God and grow in knowledge of God so they can stay in church when they grow up. Thanks to your giving to the 13th Sabbath offering in 2011, children such as Garam and Layla have grown up loving Jesus and continue to be active contributors to ministry as young adults. The impact of this offering will only truly be known when we all get to heaven. Thank you for your support of the 13th Sabbath offering that makes a difference in so many lives. You've watched a selection of news about service, faith, love of neighbor, and hope carried out by the Seventh-day Adventist Church worldwide. Present in over 200 countries, the denomination seeks to be the hands and feet of Christ through its members, leaders, administrative headquarters, institutions, and support ministries. You can access other good news by joining the official channels of the Seventh-day Adventist Church on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook, and explore the a and website on Adventist.News. Share your faith story and leave your prayer requests on our channels. We have a team praying for you 24-7. Before I say goodbye, I would like to leave you with excellent news recorded in the book of Nahum, chapter 1, verse 7. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and He knoweth them that trust in Him. Study the Bible daily to learn about other wonderful promises of hope. God willing, we will meet in the next edition of a Video. Until then, God bless you.